today of course is Alzheimer's Tea Day and as well as that very shortly how drones could come to your rescue. It's morning focus. It's just after 10 o'clock. It's time for your latest news from Claire FM's Fiona Cahill on Claire FM. Right now, I want to turn to the issue of drones because in any search and rescue situation, time is a crucial factor, but locating people who are lost and injured can be very difficult. Now, uh, my next guest is leading development into an innovative new way to find people in mountains using drone technology. Matthew Kelly, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks very much for joining us and uh, thanks for bringing in your drone as well. Uh, Describe it t- to my listeners, first of all, what you brought in today. Um, the, the drone I brought in is by DJI. Um, they're probably the world's biggest drone manufacturer, probably the most most well-known. And uh, the one I brought in is the DJI Phantom 4, uh, which just came out a few months ago. And um, for for the price of it and the size of it, it's, it's not very big. You know, it's, um, it's under a kilo, it's about a kilo. Um, it's a very small drone, but uh, it has a 4K camera. Um, which is stabilized and you can um, even stream it live on YouTube As okay. all, yeah <laughs> if, if you wanted to um, and uh, it's very stable in the air and you get maybe uh, it says 28 minutes um, officially flying time on it okay. but, but maybe 24 okay um, and what's the fascination what can you I mean the, the drone just to make sure everybody is clear at home you've got a, a handset you can mm-hmm. see the video through your phone so you know what the the, the, the drone itself is looking at but why what's, what's uh, interested you about it all? Um, well first of all uh, I guess it came out it was about three years ago when the first Phantom came out and I was always just fascinated by um, aerial photography and um the, I think the Phantom one was the first one that came out and I got that um, a friend of mine, Quentin Cooper, we bought it between us and I've actually learned an awful lot fr- from that drone because it was kind of um, for years the people in RC were using um, a kind of a different system than, than this drone uses because uh, it was kind of an older version where you had one radio controller uh, to control the aircraft and then you had another feed for the video mm. and it was a kind of fuzzy kind of SD uh, kind of video low quality kind low, of low quality and there was no gimbals and there was no anything so um, it was great getting in at that stage because uh, we wanted to produce nice aerial videos and at the time we had to get our own gimbal and make it work and get rid of the jello and extend the range and we were trying different transmitters and receivers <laughs> so what you can't do now because everything's integrated into drone you can't take things out and it's all integrated into one circuit board okay so, so that was kind of fascination, and uh, I have an interest in archaeology. So, uh, I really wanted to fly over, like Dunangus, and and see it from the air, and maybe spot things people haven't seen before. So. Okay, and is that where you're primarily f- focused then, up to date? That sort of a that sort of a trip. Yeah, and I, I was also working at the time on um, uh, an app for Cliffs and Moher. Um, this time last year I was in London and I, I had a full time job and I was dying to come home and uh, I, I made this app for the Listen Moher it's, it's an audio guide and uh, for the audio I wanted to put in had some photos and then I wanted to have some videos so I thought this would be great for the drone because mm. I can fly around O'Brien's Tower and it'll be beautiful so um, so the app is there now, it's free to download and it has some video uh, of the cliffs in, from the air and that was kind of my, my main, uh, what I was working towards to, to get those shots okay. and um, when I was in England, uh, my sister told me about Enterprise Ireland and um, so they kind of help people with business ideas so um, I came back and I did New Frontiers in, in Donegal and Phase 1 and Phase 2 and uh, they really helped me develop my business and get things up and running and so I finished the Clisson Moher app and then I did a, an app on one award for, for De Mullen Castle okay. um, for the golf course so what I did was I got my drone and I flew through each hole and I got the golf pro to do commentary so people coming from abroad want to come to Ireland and want to see Jamal Castle and how the golf course is so it's another free to download and uh, won an award from that and then from that Enterprise Ireland helped me along and that's where I met Donegal Mountain Rescue one of the yeah. Enterprise uh, Ireland events we'll get on to that in yeah. a second so but what can the drone do then I guess it's the angles and, and, and the ability to travel and it, it just gives you a different perspective on the likes of the cliffs or the flyover in the golf hole is that the case? Yeah, it's, it's just something you, you couldn't do before uh, especially with, with the new uh, DJI system, it's called the Light Bridge so it gives you back almost a HD image on, on your iPad or phone um, from a huge distance away um, you know, which you really couldn't do before, and it kind of, it's yeah, and the stability of it, and you know, it can fly, you know, 
pretty high winds. And uh, I met an archaeologist who's using it to um, fly around ancient sites and create 3D maps. You know, it's a kind of... Okay. Uh, that you can download and you can zoom in, in in real time and see. So kind of, it's a great tool. It's just, uh, DJI were saying, you know, they kind of made it for photographers, but they're finding so many different areas now are using it. Okay, so. and for video and for photo. Mm. I have to ask you, is it an expensive bit of kit? Um, this one is about a grand and a half, I think. Okay. Um, which, you know, maybe if you were to get the features this had maybe four years ago, it would have been you know, an awful lot more than that. So for the features, the Cinder Drone is actually quite good value. Okay. Um, so you can have various uses as you've just been outlining. You can use it for business. People use it for a bit of fun. It can be a hobby um, for, for, for a lot of people. But you're looking to now use it in, in another new novel way and in one where, where you're hoping to, to help rescue teams in particular. What have you done so far? Yeah, um, at one of the Enterprise Ireland events in Lauder Kenny, I was approached by Donegal Mountain Rescue uh, and I was there at my table with all my drones on it and uh, I was asked, well, can, can this be used for mountain rescue? And I said, yeah, I was actually thinking, that was something I was, I was actually thinking about anyway. And so, you know, it, we thought, oh, this will work really well. But, you know, there's one thing, having a nice idea, but then trying it in the field and, you know, could t- totally different. So we, we I, there was, they were very good. They invited me to join them in their training and had different training scenarios and they would carry those scenarios out looking for one of the team would pretend to be a casualty sure. and they'd try and see how long it took with so many people. And then we, we repeated the same scenario with the drone and found it, did it in a, one third the time. So we kind of looked at each other and went, right, you know, this, is, this isn't just a good idea, there's something here. Uh, so, so what it does is it kind of, uh, as well as you know finding the person a bit faster, it also um, is good for the crew because you know the they're you know they won't be out looking as long, so it keeps them out of harm's They'll way. They'll know exactly where the casualty is. Yeah. They can go straight there. And especially maybe on on a cliff or something, it says someone going down the rope. You can send the drone down there to, to look around. So uh, for the people searching, it's good, and uh, hopefully for someone who's lost, helps find them okay. faster. It all sounds common sense. Let's roll it out and do it everywhere. Yeah, well, um, that's what we're, we're trying to do. Um, we went to DJI and uh, I had this because I'm an app developer and they've, um, I think they're one of the first drone companies that opened up their system for an SDK, which is software development kit. Okay. So I can go in and I can play around with all their features. And um, so the plan is over the summer to, is to keep working with Donegal Mountain Rescue and, and I keep asking them, what, what do you need? What's the most important thing you need? What, what can we do? What which features can we advance to make the job even better mm. to make everything work so, so that's what we're trying to find out um, yeah. but, but it doesn't seem like a huge leap from something that can broadcast a high quality that can travel quite quickly that mm. can cover a large area in a relatively short amount of time that can show you live a, a, a very high quality video it doesn't seem like they would need an awful lot more um, well it's flying in those conditions in the mountains is, is very difficult okay. um, I think you'll be talking to Oisin uh, soon so you know to have a pilot uh, you need training and but to fly in mountains conditions and search and rescue conditions you're going to need advanced training to uh, you know to mm. fly first of all in those conditions and then you'll, you'll need a special drone to fly in those conditions because uh, as good as this drone is it won't fly in the rain or if, if it's really windy it won't fly in the wind okay. so that's another part um, that I'm working with Oisin is to create our own drone that will fly in those conditions. Oshin joins us on the line now. He's a commercial drone instructor and also an air corps pilot from uh, Spanish Point, I understand. Oshin, good morning to you. Oshin McGrath. Good morning. How are things? I'm very good, thank you. Uh, uh, working as an air corps pilot, you've, you've been in similar situations to, to what we've just been discussing, I'm sure. What sort of a potential do, uh, do drones offer? Well, I suppose the drones... Um they will allow you to get places where the helicopters can't and in my experience of flying helicopters around is um, you can, if you keep above a certain altitude and it's rare that you actually get into some of the nooks and crannies that particularly in mountain rescue situations and particularly in coastal areas maybe along the cliffs um, along the coast can be quite difficult to get into with a helicopter but with the drones it kind of alleviates that problem and allows you to get into those areas a little bit easier So can this help save people? Can it help save lives even? Absolutely, yeah. We've we've done a couple of briefs, and um, I think the, one of the common kind of misconceptions, really, with drones at the moment, is that they don't really provide a search and rescue service, more a kind of a search and locate. And what we have kind of put together now is a is a program that will allow a commercially available drone to do that and um, to perform that function because it doesn't really exist at the moment. 
Uh, and then, as Matthew said correctly there, that the, the majority of these drones um, aren't really weatherproof at the moment, um, but we're working to, to solve that as well by building waterproof and, and pretty much windproof drones that will be capable of flying up in any conditions in the days when the helicopter can't go well then maybe a drone will be able to go and um, it doesn't put pilots or crew at risk either. It's, I suppose, somewhat indispensable or disposable. I was speaking before we came on air with Matthew and, and one of the things he was telling me was that there are a number of hurdles that have to be overcome and one of them is, is a situation whereby the drone and the, the helicopter can, can work together that that wouldn't be permitted at the moment. They, yeah, well, it, normally when, an air, when you see an aircraft as an unmanned aircraft pilot, when you see another aircraft, you'd land and put it away because they take priority kind of in the rules of the air. But um, what we'd aim to do as well is to, that maybe these machines will work together. But really, that's down to an organisation themselves and that they they will, I suppose, give their um, employees and give their pilots the correct training to, to allow them to interact together. And that's going to be very important. It's going to be, I suppose, one of the, one of the bottom lines, really, with the... Mm-hmm. But the whole thing and the integration of the two aircraft together will be training and, mm-hmm. and efficient use, yeah. And, and in effect, the drone will be able, I'm not putting you out of a job here, but the drone will be able to do what you're doing from the helicopter in terms of spotting the person on the ground and directing the team on the ground to the exact location. That's it, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people ask me that question, but it's not really going to, I don't think, in the foreseeable future anyway, I don't think I'd be too worried about losing my job up here, but I think what, what helicopters do is provide you with a, a mission kind of flexible platform in that if a mission changes that the helicopter can change and the crew can adapt to change and allow the mission and follow the mission whereas with a drone the mission is a bit more specific so in I don't know let's say if the, if the mission changes to something a bit more drastic but then the drone isn't going to be able to handle that and the, the biggest limitation of drones is the moment of flight time but the rescue agencies will be able to use that for, for a very specific task if it's a missing person search well then they'll use it for that specific task mm. um, in the the guard air support unit, for example, and kind of searches and property searches if something happens, well, then the, the mission can change very easy. And that's um, the search and rescue helicopter guys as well would know that the, the missions would rarely very kind of change, stay the same. Okay. That they did often change, and then that's when the drones be kind of come a little bit more obsolete. Okay. Matthew, how far away are we from this becoming a reality? Um, well, we're going to try the, the testing out during the summer and until October. Um, it may be a year or so, I think, you know, just think we, we get everything sorted out, we get the app developed into beta and then we will go to other search and rescue teams to try out and, you know, it, it could be, yeah, it could be a while before, before it gets done. But but you, you still see, even though it could be a little while away, you still see a firm future? Oh yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be an important tool. Um, it's just going to be a tool that Mountain Rescue or any services will, will use. It'll, it won't replace anything or it'll just be a, an extra tool they'll have to use um, when it's appropriate to use it. And is it being embraced, Oshin, in that way as as an addition, as a as a tool that can, can hopefully help save people? Oh, I think it will, yeah. I think it'll it'll allow a very easy easy kind of functional platform um, and program that uh, that these rescue teams can use and, and without too much training, without too much kind of in depth knowledge, they they'll just be able to kind of almost like a plug and play system, um, like the iPhone kind of generation, I suppose, and that these people will be able to use it very easily. It's uh, trying to keep it as simple as possible and using the experience that we have both in in drones and helicopters and tie those in together to make it easier for people. That that was the main key in the design and that's the way it'll work. Okay, well, we wish you all the very best with it and who knows, it could be saving one of our lives at some point in the in the, in the future. Matthew Kelly and Oshie McGrath, thank you both for joining us this morning uh, and as I say, the very best of luck with that one. Very shortly, we'll tell you about a, a talk on mental health taking place in Ennis tonight. Claire FM's Morning Focus with Gavin Grace.